morning everyone happy sunday today and uh we just wanted to come to you today and uh say hey and hope everyone's doing great uh we're gonna get into this this morning it's been a minute and uh i hope everyone's doing fine and uh to those of you that uh may view this later uh we're uh, anticipating uh some good study here this morning and I hope to uh, open up some uh, good stuff for you that you might see some stuff that uh, you're not getting taught today and uh, so with that um, let me get set up here on a couple things that uh, I wanted to kind of go through with you and uh, let me throw this slide over here so you can see it uh, move it over here and let me just uh, bring this thing up and let's see is this thing going to go up for me here okay I think it will maybe I can just make it larger for you here anyhow there's a little story I tell about a rug doctor um, and I think that uh, this story matches what we call religion today. Um, there's been some hijacking uh, with, with what we call religion today. The hijacking is uh, what we know as churches today, these, these assemblies together today. And uh, there's been a lot of interweaving uh, throughout the Word of God as we so call it today and what we referenced as the Bible. And so when you look at that, we're looking at, um, just for instance, let me tell the rug doctor story. So you know, years ago when I was young and dumb and, and still uh, figuring out a way to get through and try to make my ends meet and all that stuff, uh, had this slick salesman come in and he had this uh, expensive vacuum, wouldn't tell us the price. He, he wanted to demonstrate and show us what it could do and everything. and and he come in there and he used our water and all this stuff and and uh, he put this chemical in it and wanted to test a little portion of our carpet and stuff and you know um, he just showed us uh, the miracle of how this this vacuum had just cleaned our, our carpet so well and showed us all the nasty dirt that it just pulled up and uh, what you don't realize is that it, the miracle of this vacuum had nothing to do with the vacuum. It had nothing to do with the, the cleaner that he put in there. The miracle was the water itself. The water was the miracle. He was selling something we already had access to. And he was making it to be something that they had exclusive rights to. And this is exactly what religion is today. It's exactly what religion is today. They're selling a product that they're putting their name on, they're putting their twist on, they're marketing through their uh, product marketing reps as preachers, priests, apostles, and prophets, and all these things, and their their special gifts of healing and and tongues and and you name it. They 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 apply it to themselves, and that only through them. Only through their uh, flavor of religion will you find this. And this is the problem today. You're finding nothing. And, and I want you to know that, that this is the pitch. This is the switch. And this is the Jesus that you're not going to see coming. The Jesus they're preaching is not going to come because this is a fictitious and a fake Jesus. And I just want to read some scripture here this morning. Um, just to just Mark 7, 6 through 13, and, and it says, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Albeit in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as washing of pots and of cups and of many other such things like you do. And he said unto them, But full well you reject the commandments of God, that you may keep your own tradition. 
your own ideas, your own ideologies. Uh, for Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift, but by, but by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his mother or his fa mother father, father his mother. Making the word of God of zero or none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many of these things ye do. Okay? I'm not going to go in and dissect a lot of this today because it would just take too long. I'm just going to touch on these things, go out and study if you will, but get the point here today. And one master, come follow me. And, and, and I tell you today, Jesus, note, Jesus did not. There, there, if, if Jesus was going to stay with, with the old traditions or with the old ordinances, that, that Moses brought down from the Mount Sinai, if, Moses, if Jesus was going to stay with that, uh, the old law, and he was going to, as they, they tried to teach, to roll over these ordinances and all these, these altars and this sacrifice, and they just say, oh, well, it's just spiritual today. And they try to bring all these things forward and bring it over from the old law, and they try to make it a new law, and they try to just mix it and slurry this, this drink up. When Jesus brought the new wine, the new wine, which is pure, and this new wine that, that it, it was referenced at, at the wedding, the first miracle Jesus did, that, that the, uh, the important person in, at the wedding said, you know, most people bring the new wine first, but you save the new wine for last, the best for last. And that's what we've got today through Jesus Christ and for the grace that he brought to us. That he died once and for all. We have nothing else to give on an altar, but yet these churches today want you to come to an altar. You know what that altar's for? To give subservience to man, not God. Because God already accepted sacrifice through Jesus. All right, so. So the pitch, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the pictures say what they say here. The pitch, you know the pitch. You know how they come through and they, they sell you on, on these things, just like the vacuum cleaner. Oh, and, and, and they'll come and they'll, they'll lay it all out. And, and I've done this for years and they've done it to me for years in religion. They will lay it all out, how you, know, you do this and they say God will bless you if you give and all this stuff. If you've got something to give, God is blessing you. And that's for you not them to build their kingdoms and that's what they're doing today building their kingdoms and i'm just gonna like i said i'm gonna i gotta go through these slides because uh i, I don't want to take a lot of time today drilling into these things we have went over some of this before in in previous videos and i'm just kind of using these slides to kind of get us through here um and again the pitch they start out with the pitch hey you know what to get y'all buttered up you know, here, here's what can happen, man. This is, this is what can happen. And then now the switch. Now this is what you got to do to get it. Here's where you get involved. You got to start building their church, building their kingdom, and you got to start doing this. But, but it's for this, man. This is what you're going to get in heaven. Well, this is what we get on earth. Not you, we. You, you get that credit card out. You get that money out. You get that coin out. And, and, and you'll help us build the kingdom of God. Well, the, the, the skinny is, is that you give money to them and they'll appropriate it to God's kingdom and, and, and they'll give you a little bit of praise and you'll just know you're doing a good job and you're building these, these fictitious uh, uh, rewards in heaven. And that's what they tell you. And when Jesus is not behind any of that at all. So anyhow, these things, they don't work. They're not working. They haven't worked for people. But people are, are suckered into these things that they tell you. And that's exactly what they do. They sucker you in. And these things is just, it's not real. Because in the back, behind that curtain of the entertainment, behind that curtain of, of the Oz wall, right? The Oz wall back there with the guy uh, doing the little controls. 
and, and, and they'll go back there and they got the money counters and they got people counting, the, counting your ties and what they were fictitious. Uh, they, they rule you into thinking that God's going to bless you with ties and, and, and giving them a tenth. That's just money counters. That's bean counters. Remember Jesus threw the money changers tables over, making, making coin at the churches. And he said, my temple shall be called a house of prayer, not for monetary gain. And, and that's exactly what they've turned it into. They're, they're selling you coffee. They're selling you um, anything from A to Z. And, and, and they're, they're selling you preaching tapes. They're selling you music, everything that they can to extract your money from you. That, that moment you step in that place, they want your coffee money. They want to they create. They want you to go online and, and, and donate to them. To their cause so they can do a little bit for what they call for Jesus and the kingdom and, and it's not getting you anywhere it's just draining your bank account in the name of them to say that they're doing something for Jesus so let's move on here so as we see through the scriptures and I, we're going we're to talk about a few other things here but once you have been you've seen the truth and let's go through a couple scriptures here so once truth has been delivered to you and this is beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation you know what common is is this simple it's common sense it's just what on its face appears real something that that you would just immediately think you yeah, know yeah that that's right because I believe God puts a measure of faith in us all. And what that measure of faith is, it says, you know what? Yeah, it just, it looks right. It should happen. And God gives us that. And, and you may not see that in some people sometimes, I jest. Um, but it happens. And so when, when you look at that, you have to understand that people are out to take from you. And that's what these people do. No matter how virtuous they seem, how many, how many people that just come by and, and act like they're this and that, they're not for you. Excuse me. Okay. Once you've been faced with the true reality, you know, they practice. They practice. The preacher practices preaching. The preacher practices authenticity. They get so real. And, and some of you older generation remember these, these TV evangelists where they constantly would uh, come on TV. And, and we called them crocodile tears in those days would come up there and just, just tears wail down their face while they were committing adultery in the background that we didn't find out till, till years later. And sometimes, um, not too long, but they were, they were, they were found out. Um, you've seen the Tammy Faye Baker, uh, Jim Baker uh, thing. You can even look that up still. Uh, you had the Jimmy Swagger ordeal. You, you've seen all these things just, just break these, these TV networks apart that were these ministries they called, so-called. And, and when you see that, you see all those things happening. Oh. So anyhow, these things, they, they practice. They practice these things. Behind the scene, they're, they're, they're movie stars. They come into all this stuff here. They, they I mean, they, they, it, it, is, it is Hollywood. They've got can-can lights. They've got everything. They've got the... You, you've seen these presentations. You've seen these, these venues. They've got your fog machines, everything. Everything that Hollywood had, that would have to give you. And they're, they're playing an entertainment show for you so that you'll get off your wallet and you'll give them their, your money. So once you've realized your goals or end game may be a fairy tale. And here he says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. They don't want you to know that. They want you to think that it's meat and drink here because you give that to them. They want you to give them the meat and drink of your labors. And, but Jesus said it's not meat and drink, it's, but it's righteousness, peace, love, and joy in the Holy Ghost through His Spirit, through which you live in Him for holiness and, and, and dedication to Jesus, through your spirit and love for your brother. And they don't have that. And He said, casting all your care upon Him, who? Jesus. 
because he cares for you. And they said, submit yourselves therefore to God. Who? To God. To a preacher? To a pastor? Like they want to teach you? you got to come under submission to a pastor? You're going to have a hierarchy? There's no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. Jesus says it in three places. Listen to some of the other, other videos. i show you right where they're at. I can tell you right now. I just don't want to go into that. But if you have a problem with that, I got the scriptures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to who? God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But only when you submit yourself to God. Every evil work and confusion is, is when there is people contesting over positions. And when you have a hierarchy in a church, that is exactly what's happened. Every evil work and contentions. And it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And that's what Jesus wants us to focus on. All right. And then uh, this is religion. And it says, uh, and we, I think we already read this. Yeah, we, yeah, we read this. And I want to, I want to play here real quick. get over here well, okay let me get this I want to switch gears here for just a second here and I'm going to talk about uh, real quick um, one of the things I wanted to point out and, and we're going to get into this um, this is some of the things that I wanted to bring to you today also, is when we talk about the Word of God and the truth, and we're talking about, and I, I did this so much when I was a young uh, Christian in religion. Um, I was taught mainly UPC uh, religion, um, and that's, that's all I knew, because that's what I came into after I got the call of God on my life, and because I was just... Uh, trained in society that you go to church when you find God, which is the, the dumbest thing you could do in most cases is to go to church and get man indoctrinated. Um, let God speak to you. Follow after the Lord. Read through the scriptures. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Spirit of God guide you, and he will. Uh, but don't you got, you got people that just go in and they get indoctrinated by the ways and the will of man. And, and they get thrown into these, these off-kelter um, ways that, that man wants you to believe in. And, and it, it, it really sucks because you get so sucked into it that you are so far away from what Jesus would ever have you to do that, that you are ineffective in the kingdom of God. Okay? So... Pointing out a few very erroneous areas in the New Testament. Um, and when you look at Mark 16, you'll, you'll find in it, not in the King James Version. And when you say the King James Version, 1611 is when this was put together. And then later on, they found uh, the Codex, um, Sinaitis, uh, Cyan. Sinaiticus, and then the Vaticanus um, Codex. Uh, supposedly was before that. Some have some controversy. They think that it may have been the 18th century when that was brought out, 15th century. Maybe it was older. Um, but they have it on the, on the scale being before the Sinaiticus. Um, anyhow, regardless of where it was, but this is the oldest put together um, book of textual um, book of the New Testament that there is. Um, it has some extra books in it. Um, it has about half of the Old Testament in it. And, uh, but anyhow, I wanted to show you uh, Mark uh, 16. And when you look right here, when you look, and you'll see that here on the screen, uh, in the NIV, now 
your King James Bible um, does not have this. Uh, however, your New King James Version, now this is the NIV, and if you look here, the footnote right here after verse 8 says the earlier earliest manuscripts and some other ancient wit, uh, ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20. Um, at least they put that in there. And you find that. And, and the, the earliest manuscripts, and, and get this, your earliest manuscripts, and, and this is about the mid-fourth uh, century, okay? And that is about 350 A.D., okay? And that's, that's the timeline where they've timelined this, this manuscript of, of book. And so what that means is that that is known to be a copy of a copy of a copy. And these were hearsay, copies of a copy of a copy. That's what we have, the most recent, the most earliest version of any known writings of what we have today. And again, we did, they did, when they translated the King James Bible, this codex was not available to them. So there you go. If you're, if you're staying with and doing the uh, King James Version, it is not up to date with newfound in information. And so here you go, you've got a footnote in the NIV showing the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20. This is relevant information. And um, I could show you so many other things. Let me, let me just pull up some other stuff that I've, I've just um, brought out here. Let me see here. I could find them real quick. I hope not. To, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time right now. Uh, let me see if I can find it really quick. I don't want to. Again, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time here. Uh, okay. So this is this is this is similar. So as you can see, this is this is like this is what they what they found. And the story is that there was an Italian man that had had went through a monastery, and, and this was in uh, uh, Sinai, and um, he had seen this book put up, and he had written about it. But there was another. Um, I, I apologize. I, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was looking around for all these uh, manuscripts and these parchments. And he was collecting them. And he had heard about this, and he had went to this monastery. And when he got there, they brought him out um, over 100 pages of this uh, book. And so he put this together, and that's how we have the, uh, the Sinaiticus. Okay? Um, there are, and this is, this is what it's called here, uh, the Codex Sinaiticus and the Codex Vaticanus, um, and that's that's the two. Uh, again, the Vaticanus is is supposedly before this uh, Sinaiticus. These were setting there for years. They were they were existing when the King James Version existed, but they were hidden away. And the Vaticanus uh, was there, but the, the Catholics would not allow anyone to see it. So they had hidden this hidden the word away so people could not see it. Um, so that's why people didn't know anything about it. And it is thought to be very um, swayed from the writings after that. Okay? So let's, let's get to some of this. And I, I, um, our writings and the framing of the way these things were developed. Okay? Um, so none of the Gospels were written by any of the words and names. Um, let me see real quick. 
And I'm not going to spend much time on this. I'm going to try to try to hit some highlights here real quick. Okay. So let me just see here if I can hit some highlights here. I hope of you'll be Bible able to hear this. Isn't necessarily the god of reality. Okay. And the most commonly used dates for his lifespan are 4 BCE being a minor the year 70 CE. I mentioned that date in last week's video as the date for which both these as being real prophecies, which many Christians do, this means that the earliest date for any of the synoptic gospels is 70 CE. Most scholars do place Mark somewhere just shortly after 70 CE, and then Matthew and Luke Acts somewhere around 10 years later. Q, if it did exist, would be placed before 70 CE, perhaps as early as the year 40. John, on the other hand, is usually placed last, around the year 100 CE. So, even though the Gospels may not have been written by the individuals they are now named after, they were all likely written during a time when people who had known Jesus were still alive. Which means, even if you're like me and don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the Gospels are still fairly good sources for gathering some basic information about his life. Now before I go, I want to address one more topic. Since I won't be doing a separate episode Thomas Fine until a manuscript of it was found in 1945. So From there the there are several studies that have been done. And, and the way I explained this the other day to a uh, dear friend and brother in the Lord is that there are people who do not have a dog in the fight in religion. These people only concern themselves with with historical data. They could care less whether you think speaking in tongues is, is a salvation issue. They could care less whether you're Baptist, whatever you want to call yourself. They have no cares. They don't even believe in Jesus. They, they could care less whether you think Jesus ever existed or he does or doesn't. They don't care if you believe in the, the, the flood or not the flood. They don't even believe in the, the creation. Um, so they really don't care about that. What they care about is being able to line up certain uh, languages during a certain period and validating those, those languages with other things, whether it be mythology and, and the way people spoke at that time and what kind of language uh, knowledge they had. Uh, did they, were they advanced enough to uh, have medical? And, and these periods is what they go by. They reference these things across the board, across the world, everything that they could find, and they align these up through timelines in, in history. This is the way that they time these things, and they can put these things together through those means. And, and, and I know I've had people that say, oh, well, you know, they weren't even Christian, they don't believe in God, and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something. There is such dumbness, such ignorance in religion today, and then there's such subterfuge in religion today that people meaningfully deceive people. They are so biased that they will lie to you to manipulate religion. And that's what has happened in the pages of this Bible we hold in our hands today. And that is why Jesus himself said, let no man deceive you. That was the first thing, 24 and 3, Matthew 24 and 3, he said, take heed let no man deceive you. Who is the great deceiver? Man. Who's behind the great deceiver? The devil. And who is he going to come in the form of? Through man. And that is the number one culprit who is going to deceive you because who is he going to come in the form of? The Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? 
go to Revelation, you'll see he comes as the beast and he's going to set in the temple saying he is God. Is he going to come as a dragon, some mythical creature? No, he's going to look like a man, the number of a man. Man, it's not that hard to get, folks. All right, so let's, let's go on. Or communities rather than the works of single authors. So, so we, we're talking about hypocrisy. So here we go. Example, some scholars posit the existence of a Thomasine community and a Johannine community. So he's talking about some other books here, and I'm going to skip over that. I don't want to go in all that. We don't have time for that. Um, and then did Paul write these letters and all that stuff? And, and I have my views on Paul as well. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, whoever wrote Paul, whether it was Paul or not, um, again, uh, I've got other videos out there that you can you can look at and, and, and make your own decisions of, of whether, you know, do your own research. Um, Pauline epistles were written prior to the four Gospels. Pauline epistles were written prior to the four Gospels. Okay, so as you see these, and you see down there, um, that's what they speculate, that's what they believe. Now, understand that these are all copies of copies of copies. These are not original manuscripts. None of these are original manuscripts. So when you go back, what we talked about before, when you see the codex, that is a copy of a copy of a copy. So none of these, none of these are originals. So regardless of what this guy is saying, oh, it was written in 50, 50, well, that's common era. So, um, but these are copies of copies of copies. So there are no uh, 50 AD, this is um, common era. So when you, when this guy is telling this, don't, don't think, oh, yeah, this was just, uh, you know, 30 years after Jesus died or whatever. That's not true. These are copies of copies of copies. And this is 350 A.D., 350 years later, at least three copies later of hearsay. And there are also translation errors. And when I say errors, this is where translators and even notations when they have made changes to different translations and they even write in there and call out a previous translator an idiot or a fool for changing the first one and they change it back. So they have little footnotes calling out each other idiots for changing something. So they do change it and they have changed it. They've changed whole meanings of paragraphs. They've added and they've taken stuff out of the original manuscripts and meanings. So, and, and when you look at the Vaticanus, um, you, you look at that, this is, this is a twisted versions of what the way they wanted people to believe. Is it make any sense that they hid this, these, these, uh, these codexes for years and didn't want people to see it because they wanted it twisted to a certain way to rule the people and not only let, not let them see it? And then when it came out, then you've seen all these reformations. That's why. All right. So be careful. When you could tell people this is the true word of God, you are lying to them because you don't know enough to say that. Is an important point. And let me, just, let me just note here, as I've noted several times before, that this is why it's so important to lean on the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, that you must let God be true and every man a liar. This word, and, and, and the way I, I, I say it, and the way I look at it, is that through the pages of the Bible, are there truths in there? Yes, I believe there are. And I believe the Holy Ghost will connect you to the way. Is the way there? Yes. Is it complete? I don't believe so. I believe Christ, as all that we can know, will lead us into truth and righteousness. He said he would through the Spirit. 
And so let's let's continue on, and we're going to wrap this up shortly. When it comes to the study of the historical Jesus, skeptics have pointed out the fact that the Pauline epistles contain zero references to. Now here's here's one of the things that I do talk about in in some of the other um, videos, and I want you to make note of this. And this is very important, and this is what causes red flags for me and a lot of Paul's writings, so-called. Graphical details about the life of Jesus, other than his death and supposed resurrection. For example, Paul never mentions Mary or any of Jesus' other family members, not even in passing. He also never mentions Bethlehem or Nazareth, nor does he ever refer to even a single one of Jesus' parables, sermons, exorcisms, healings, or other miracles. This is a bit strange, and skeptics use it to argue that Jesus was primarily a legendary figure, if not an entirely fictional one. However, believers counter these arguments with the fact that Paul's letters were well, letters, and the purpose of the letters were to explain theology, not to list facts about Jesus, facts that the recipients of the letters would already have known. Let's now move on to the four letters that Paul is said to have written to individual people. These are called the pastoral epistles, and when it comes to the pastoral epistles, only one is universally recognized as being genuine. That one is Philemon. Again, this mostly boils down to style. Philemon very much matches the style of the six letters we've already labeled as genuine. So that brings us to a total of seven genuine Pauline epistles. At least 50% of biblical scholars feel that the other three pastoral epistles, Titus and the two Timothys, are pseudepigrapha, which again would place them much later on the timeline. Which brings us to Hebrews. Virtually no biblical scholar today attributes this one to Paul, even in the most conservative circles. In fact, this letter doesn't even begin with the usual Paul at the top. No sender is mentioned, nor any recipient, although at the end it says those from Italy send their greetings. But the book is called Hebrews because it is thought that it was sent to Jewish Christians in Jerusalem. So this is yet another book for the anonymous category. However, there have been numerous hypotheses put forward over the years as to who the author might be. One hypothesis that I find quite interesting is that it was written by a woman named Priscilla. If true, this would be very notable. You probably noticed that so far, it seems that the Bible was written entirely by men which is not too surprising considering that, as a whole, female authors were pretty rare in the ancient world. However, before we talk about Priscilla, I should point out that there is also the possibility that some female authors contributed toward the Tanakh, or... Okay. So, some might ask, what, what is pseudofigure? Pseudofigraphy. And let me just uh, throw this out here, if I can, if I can get this window up. So pseudepigrapha are falsely attributed works, text whose claimed author is not the true author or a work whose real author attributed it to a figure of the past. Okay, works may have originated among uh, Jewish Hellenizers, others may have Christian authorship in the character. Um, so basically, many of them could be just simply false writings. And so that, that is some of the, some of the things, and that's, that's what they put in here. A lot of these could be labeled under pseudepigrapha. And so that's, that's what we have here. And I just wanted to point that out. There are some other uh, areas here that I was going to show you, but because of the time limit, I don't want to spend uh, super amounts of time here. Um, so we are going to end this here. 
I was going to see real quick if I could find one of the other searches. Uh, the codex. Uh, let's see here. So anyhow, you can go out there and look at some of these. These, these codex, there is lots of information out there on them. Just be careful. You can go down some crazy rabbit holes. You've got so many opinions on this stuff. Uh, but seriously, don't be... Don't come become <laughs> indoctrinated and lied to with all this stuff. It's it's just not worth it, folks. It is not worth it. Um, like I say, a lot of the a lot of the newer stuff out there in, in Bibles, they will at least start telling you the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses nine through twenty. There are so many um, variants out there that show you literally that that um and when you look at samuel you look at um the the variants in uh just just simply told the stories when you look at david and goliath one the big big thing that uh samuel basically says that goliath was like near 10 feet tall and the other one um, basically says that Goliath is only six foot nine. So, who lied? One or the other has to be true. And these are these are things that that you 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 gonna sit there and stand on the Bible and say God's word is true and God don't lie and blah blah blah. How do you how do you square that? How does that how does that work for you? And you can't have it both ways, folks. Don't make yourself an idiot. So these are things that you, you have to reckon with. And, and don't be one of those people. And, and they're not teaching this stuff in church. All they're doing is giving you, you these things. They're telling you when you go teach Bible studies and you get people coming to church that this is the Word of God. And, and when you teach that Bible study that you have to agree that whatever's in that Bible has got to be the Word of God. You know why? Because they have manipulated it in the face in the fact that you can you can squirrel your way around and there's enough scriptures that you can say, oh well, I got five scriptures to the other church's belief that there's three here, three to five. Who wins? This is the game they're playing. And, and again, I'm telling you that this this stuff is ridiculous. These things I'm telling you is is these you got from YouTube influencers. All these people are fake. You, you've got you've got all these things, and these people aren't going to get you there. They 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 go from success. They 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 pull in all these influencers. Um, they tell you all these great things are going to happen to you and for you. Um, Christianity, uh, religious groups. You you can look at the percentages of all these, and they're all pulling in your money. And, and when you look at all these things, that what Jesus said, what shall be the sign of my coming? And the end of the world. Take heed that no man deceives you. Matthew 24 and 4. And he starts out. What shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? That's Matthew 24 and 3. And again, the devil taketh him up to exceeding high and showeth him all the kingdoms. If you'll, I'll give you all these things. And that's what they, they promise you. They promise you all these things. If you'll just you'll just come to church, obey them, get in their little... little uh, hierarchy and you just settle down and, and, and you just warm that pew and bring people to church and God's just going to bless you like crazy. God's going to give you new cars, new house, everything's going to work out great. You're going to have that little white picket fence and, and God will just work out all your problems. Just stay faithful to your church and your pastor. That is what they drill down your throat. And Jesus said, I'll have none of that, Satan. And that's what you need to tell these people. I'll have none of that. I serve God, not you, not your temple, because I'm the temple, not this church, not this, not this building. And let's, let's, let's go away with hope and faith and love to our neighbor. His banner over us is love, and the greatest of these is love, right? So let's, let's escape religious deception today. And God bless you, and just, just keep... Loving on Jesus through loving your family, putting them first.
putting your 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 neighbor first. Who's your neighbor? Go to the to the Samaritan. Read that story over again, and you'll see who your real neighbor is, and you see who those are in the religious communities who will not give these people a second turn of the head, and you'll know who Jesus is talking about. So. God go with you today. God bless you. And I appreciate those that listen to these, these videos. And God bless you. And we'll see you coming soon.